Welcome, Chris. Take it away. So thank you, Laura Lee, and thank you, Brian. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really excited to be here and talk about Underdog. Uh, I'm also so thankful that each of you have grabbed your cup of coffee and your laptops and gotten cozy to sit with me this morning. And I am so grateful that you guys also put your faces back on so I can see everybody while I talk. That's how I know that I didn't bore you all to sleep. Um, and, you know, a huge thank you really to Laura Lee and Brian. Uh, as they already shared, July was huge for them. They had their first baby and they moved into a new house. So anybody that's moved into a new, new house already knows that that's a ton of work. And anybody who has a kid, well, I don't even need to go there. I got four of them. So I can tell you they have had a month. And the fact that they keep creative mornings going and keep this virtual experience alive uh, is just incredible. And I'm also grateful for the fact that this used to be this live one, not one-on-one, -on -one, but one-on group type of situation. And here we have this opportunity to come online. And I think that's incredible because we have people from New York. I saw Utah and California. Um, if anybody is from another country, please speak up and chat and say hi. I would love to say that my creative mornings went international. Um, but either way, national is pretty cool. And I think that that's a really unique experience that we now have in the sense that we get to come from just being able to uh, impact our own communities now to being shared across this country. So I think that's pretty cool. So about 20 years ago, I worked for a local popular retailer and it was a, it was a teen clothing store and I was an assistant manager. And at that time I was begging to get promoted. And I took the store that nobody wanted. The store had been open for nine years. It had been losing money for seven years straight. I begged for the store and they told me it was gonna close at the beginning of the following year. They said the lease was up and they were done losing money. But I begged for it because I knew something they didn't know. And they finally gave in. They gave me the store in April of 2001. By June, the store was turning increases. By back to school in July and August, we were running out of inventory because our profits were so huge. By Christmas, we'd been restocked and ran the highest increases in the entire chain of over 250 stores. By January, we were out of product. I had to rope off the back half of my store because I had nothing to put on the shelves or on the tables. I had nothing to display. The store was empty. So you're probably thinking, I kind of just jumped right in. So I will pause for a moment and tell you a little bit about myself. Hi, I'm Chris Mead. Uh, I'm a father. I have, as I said earlier, I have four kids. I have two uh, hilarious little boys, uh, Grayson and Elijah. And I have two cute and sassy little girls, Paisley and Tegan. Uh, I'm a husband to an amazing wife, Elizabeth, who is on this call. and. She is one of the faces I can't see, so that's good because I'd probably be way more nervous than I am right now. Um, I'm a son to amazing parents who are also on this call. So, hi guys. Uh, a brother to three incredible sisters who I think I saw one, if not two of them on this. So, cool to get the family support. Uh, and I'm an entrepreneur. Me and my amazing wife, Elizabeth, are the founders of Tandem Collaborative. We're a strategic consultancy right here in Phoenix. Uh, my wife likes to use the expression, we catalyze the vision of vin visionaries, which I think is really great when talking about underdogs because it's those small businesses that have those big ideas and just need somebody to help get them over the wall. And, and we have the fun pleasure of being able to step into that. And I think that's great. I'm a music lover. I love all music except for country. <laughs> I think that's a pretty common answer for a lot of people. I'm a joker. I'm a sports fanatic. I love hockey, football, soccer, 
I used to love baseball. I'm a lover and a cherisher of what I like to call the moment. So now I started just a few minutes ago sharing one of my favorite moments. I'd just taken over a business that seemed impossible to revive. I was brand new in my role. I was in a sinking area of town. For those that know Phoenix, this was Metro Center that I'm talking about. The staff that I had pretty much showed up to collect a paycheck. Uh, we were overridden with a ton of theft. The store was already on schedule to close. But the thing that I knew was that store was ready to turn around. I knew it, and I knew that I was the guy that was going to close. So the topic I got today is underdog. I was super, super excited when Brian reached out and said, hey, we're finally tapping you to speak. I put my name in the hat months ago. And, and Brian, this just shows how well you're on your game because you actually offered me this topic maybe two, three months ago. So you guys are really on the ball if I was the backup. And no, I'm not offended. I still get to speak and I got a topic I love. So a lot of these topics that have gone by, I'm looking, I'm going, I have no idea what I would have done. So I'm really happy to have gotten this one. Underdog is one that I can relate to. I actually love being the underdog. The moment I shared was one of my personal favorite underdog moments. So I wanna talk a little bit about what it is that kind of, where an underdog comes from. The underdog themselves never thinks that they're the underdog. The underdog knows that they're gonna win. When I stepped into that store, there was never a doubt in my mind that that store was not gonna close. There was never a doubt in my mind that we were gonna turn it around. Where the underdog comes from, it's the circumstances that surround that story. So you've got the ideas of, of not being good enough. I know I heard some of you guys in the, in the breakouts sharing that, you know, there's the stories of not being good enough. On a personal level, that can be a lack of education, that can be a lack of experience, a lack of training. Uh, in some regards, it even comes down to where you're from or how you were raised. Personally, I didn't graduate from college. For the longest time, that made my story that I was not good enough or educated enough to even go for more. We also have the idea of impossibility. It's never been done before. So why, why would we think we can do it? Because it's never been done. Tell that to a guy like James Buster Douglas who knocked out Mike Tyson. Nobody can knock out Mike Tyson. And this unknown guy shows up and made it look easy. We also have the idea of the odds are just too great. There's just too many factors going against. We're either outnumbered, we're out of time, we're out of resources. There's just too many factors to overcome. Does anybody know who Chris Carr is? She was initially famous as a Bud Light girl, right up until she got diagnosed with stage four cancer. Stage four, inoperable and uncurable. It's the death sentence of cancer. Time had run out, the resources weren't available to treat that stage. That was 2003. Chris Carr is still alive because she knew something the doctors didn't. She was more committed to life than she was to death. She still has cancer, she's still alive, and she lives an, other, an otherwise pretty healthy life. And what's really cool is after getting diagnosed with stage four cancer, she fell in love and got married. To me, that's, that's a pretty cool underdog story of people overcoming something that seemed impossible. The odds were stacked against and it was overcome. So not good enough, it's impossible, the odds are too great. Those are those threads that really define the underdog story for everybody but the underdog. So what's different? What's different in that person? What's different in that team or that business, that, that, that different trait that defies the odds and finds success? I'm gonna propose that there have been a series of moments that have led to this one defining moment. Moments that offer enough evidence to fortify us with 100% commitment and 100% faith that it can and will be done. I said earlier that I'm a lover and cherisher of moments. I believe that these moments are the things that, that drive us to move on to the next thing and can feed us to overcome anything. Moments that take a story of, 
I never graduated college, so I'm not good enough to strive for more. And give you permission to flip that script into something more purposeful. I didn't graduate college, and I have a degree in living life, loving people, and spreading joy. I said I love to be the underdog. Little water. What I love about the underdog is it means that you've already made that choice. You've already stepped into saying that those stories, those outside circumstances of being in that rut of not good enough, or I'm already defeated, or it just simply can't be done. You've already made the choice to move forward. You've already made the choice to overcome that. So being that underdog is, is to me, that is, that is one of my favorite positions to come from because I know I've made the choice to get through. So today I want to offer you guys a tool of how I use these moments and how I tap into these moments to get me past these challenges, to get me through the thought of I'm not good enough or the thought that the odds are too, too against me or too stacked up. The moments that we may have taken for granted when they actually occurred, but those moments are waiting deep down there in your subconscious to be evidence, evidence for you to know that you guys can do it. So I guess that probably does sound a little cheesy to some people, but I'm a guy who was scared of heights and now I love rock climbing and I love jumping out of planes. So I know that there are ways to overcome anything. And you don't need to look any further than the stories you have within yourself. You can use those, those moments, tap into those to get anywhere you want to be. Some of those moments can be scary. Some can be exciting. Some of those moments are just pure joy. So I'd like to do an exercise. Is everybody up for an exercise? I see one nodding head. I have like 10, 10 faces on here. Okay, now I got some nodding heads. I see a smile from Sacramento. Thank you, smiling in Sacramento. Raise the roof. By the way, I like the jazz hands that, that Laura Lee and Brian gave, and I wanted to give them some jazz hands. So can everybody give Laura Lee and Brian jazz hands for, for putting this on? Yay. All right, that wasn't my exercise. Ah. Uh, so this is going to be one of those exercises that I do ask you to close your eyes. Uh, no, I promise I won't hypnotize you to jump out of a perfectly good plane, although that's fun and I highly encourage it. Um, so go ahead, if you guys don't mind, and go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to think of a moment in your life that has brought you an extreme amount of joy. A moment that makes you feel warm just to think about it. If you find yourself smiling, you've picked a good one. I want you to think deeper into that moment. What did it sound like? Was there laughter? Was there music? Was there song? Were there crashing waves? What did it smell like? Did it smell like an ocean breeze? Did it smell like fresh baked cookies? Did it smell like grandma's house? Who was with you? Were you connecting with friends? connecting with family. Maybe you were at a party. I want you to focus in on the faces around you. I want you to focus on the expressions on their faces. I want you to focus in specifically on their eyes and the light in their eyes Maybe they're laughing and you can see the corners of their eyes turned. Maybe there's music. I want you to focus on the light in their eyes 
and think about the connection that that has created within you. Why is that creating so much joy? I want you to tap deeply into that connection. And when you are connected to your moment, and when you are ready, I want you to go ahead and open your eyes. Is anybody willing to share their moment? I see some people smiling. That tells me that you had a good moment. Okay. I will share mine. My moment was the moment that I knew that my wife was the one. It was my birthday. We were up in Prescott, Arizona. For those from other places, it's spelled Prescott, but don't ever call it Prescott. It's Prescott, like biscuit. Uh, and we went up there for my birthday, and we were bar hopping up and down Whiskey Row. And we walked by, I think it was Matt's saloon, and she heard a country song that she loved. Now, you guys already heard me say that I love everything but country. And she said, oh, let's go inside. And I said, okay, because I kind of thought she was pretty special. And we went inside and she asked me to dance. And I said, nope, I don't dance. And she said, oh, come on, just, just dance. All you have to do is, is just move. Nope, I do not dance. But there was a guy there and boy, could he dance. And he asked her to dance. And man, did he spin her around the floor and flip her and twist her. And I mean, I just watched it in awe. This guy belonged on Dancing with the Stars. And here he was at some Matt Saloon in Prescott, Arizona. And she came back with a big smile on her face and said, come on, just dance. And I was like, nope, not going to do it. But let's go because I don't want this guy to take you away from me. So we walked around Prescott for a little bit and drank a little bit more and went back. And the bar was a little emptier. and. Mr. Sweet Shoes was gone, and she looked at me with this big smile and said, just please dance. And I said, okay. I stood up, and I grabbed her hand, and I looked her in the eyes, and I saw a light that I had never seen or felt or experienced before. And I knew that I was in love, and I knew that she was the girl I was going to marry. That moment has been a very, very powerful moment for me. What that powerful moment can do is it drives me to want to recreate it. It drives me to want to see that expression. It drives me to know that I can be creative and step out of my comfort zone to do something incredible. I was a pretty bad dancer that night, and she had an incredible time. And so did I. And nowadays, I have, she, she loves to, to post some of the things that we do and that we talk about. And I'm constantly chasing the moment, as I like to say. I chase that moment because I want to see that smile. And I don't still dance. <laughs> um, I chase that moment because I want to see her smile. And she'll share some of the things that I do. And I get calls and messages from other guys who have girls who say, you need to knock it off because you're making us look bad. I'm willing to do these things for her because I want to chase that moment. I want to reconnect it and I want to make it happen over and over and over and over again. So now that you guys all have your moments fresh in your head, and I want you to focus now on the feeling you got and the actions that you are experiencing and taking to get that feeling. For me, that was, I stood up. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying the comments here, thank you. <laughs> um, for me, I stood up and I danced. I got out of my comfort zone. So for me, I was being brave. 
So were you being brave? Were you being connected? Were you deep into connection with friends or loved ones? Were you in a special place that means something to you? Oh, Kathy. You can use these clues to help you identify how these moments can build your evidence. Today, I gave you the gift to tap into what it takes to improve your mood. Use that joyous moment and know it isn't about getting back to that specific thing. It's about getting to recreate that connection. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Most moments are powerful snapshots of time that, can take, that we can take our lessons from. Moments of joy can spark our creativity. Moments of fear can teach us lessons to overcome. Moments of sadness can teach us ways to cope with things in a more healthy way. Moments of regret teach us to seize the moment. I can't imagine what it would have been like had I not stood up to dance with her that night. So today, we're living in a world of unimaginable uncertainty. We're in a global situation like no one has ever faced in this lifetime. Some of us right now are getting ready to be the principal of our own homeschool. A lot of us are working from home. Some are back to a, a normal workplace, but with some very different sets of rules to, to go by. And some of us are now even looking for work. Right now, we're all faced with a lot of the common threads of, this has never been done before. The odds may be too great. And for many of us, it's the thought of, I'm not good enough, trained enough, or I'm simply not ready enough for this new normal. This is very overwhelming and I'm exhausted. But you can get through anything. You have a lifetime of moments that you've already proven to yourself that you can do it. So you can connect with those moments. You can let them power you through. You can let them fortify that commitment and that belief. Because guess what's on the other side? Think about underdogs. When underdogs overcome, man, the celebration is amazing. So when you get through this, you get to party like you've never partied before in whatever way that looks like for you. Like the celebration of the US hockey team, said I'm a big sports fan when they beat the Russians in the Miracle on Ice. Al Davis said, not Al Davis, Al Michaels said, I'm also a Raiders fan, so Al Davis. Uh, Al Michaels says, do you believe in miracles? The excitement in his voice cannot be faked. Things that happen when an underdog overcomes are incredible. Like Rudy, we've all seen the movie. It is a true story. He is the only player and first player carried off the Notre Dame football field. He played three, game, three plays in one game, the last game of the year, and sacked the quarterback of the other team. 5'8", 175 pounds, and he sacked somebody playing for Notre Dame, and he got carried off the field. I would say his celebration was pretty great. I would also say the celebration for anybody who's beat the Patriots, they know what it feels like to party too. That celebration, the joy, there's release. It's all worth it. The moment I shared earlier, I had told the corporate VP earlier that year that I was going to make that store make a million dollars. I agree. And the Colts are fun to watch too. Uh, I told the VP of that company that that store was going to make a million dollars. The best that store had ever done was just over $750,000. On the last day of that year, our increases were so big and with no product left in the store, we hit the million dollar transaction. My entire staff of 16 to 18 year old high school kids showed up on a Saturday morning, uninvited, not disinvited, uninvited, with poppers and balloons because they wanted to be there for the million dollar transaction. They lived the story of being the underdog and knew that we were gonna get there. And they showed up Saturday morning, unpaid, 
with balloons and poppers and celebrated that person that made the million dollar transaction. That story still almost makes me emotional 20 years later. And that story was huge. I said it was 2001. In September, we had 9-11 and we still had an incredible year. You can get through everything and you can do anything. Connect to the moments that make life real and use those to get you through. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys all spending time with me today. I hope I provided a nugget. I love these talks uh, because of the nuggets they provide. Uh, I, I, I had a talk on the top of uh, Clarendon Hotel with Megan Epley, and she had said, choose a word that is going to be your defining word for this year. My word was forward. That was in, Laura Lee, help me out. Was that January, February? It was December. in January. December. That was January. We had no idea what was in front of us. And my word for the year was forward. And man, how powerful of a word that has been for me this year. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have been able to share my moment of moment. And I'm grateful for you guys to be here. So thank you, everybody.